everybody, this is a recording to help with the, uh, with the gravitational force data analysis lab using the FETSIM. Um, and in particular, we're going to talk about how to get the graph and how to figure out the uncertainties uh, to get the error bars. So here I have all of my data. I have eight different variations. I have my measurements for my masses. Uh, my distance and my force. Uh, and I also have their uncertainties. Now this table isn't uh, this table isn't formatted really well for presentation, but it's just for data analysis, so it's just fine. Notice my uncertainties are just the measurement uncertainties because we didn't do repeated trials. We did different variations each time. So it's a plus or minus one in my last significant digit. And they're not even all formatted the same. But let's, uh, let's take a look at what we're going to need to graph. Well, I want to get g as the slope of my graph. And if I look at my equation, the force of gravity is big G, m1 times m2 over r squared. Um, so if big G is going to be the slope, then that means force would be my y value, my y variable. And then mm over r squared is going to be my x variable. So I'm going to have to create a new column. Um, to calculate mm over r squared, mm over r squared, and the units are going to be kilograms, kilograms squared per meters squared, or kilograms squared times meters to the minus 2. And I'm just going to create a formula, so equal sign, and I'm going to do mass 1, click, star times mass 2, click, divided by parentheses, distance, raised to the second power, caret 2, close the parentheses, press enter. I have my formula, mm over r squared, and I'm just going to grab the corner of that cell, drag and drop down to uh, increase the values in the uh, formula right here. So now I have mm over r squared. I can graph my data now. So let's insert a scatter plot. Let's make it blank. Let's get it out of the way. Scroll down just a bit. Right click, select data, add. Uh, well, my x values are going to be, well, we said the x values are mm over r squared, so I'll highlight those. And my y values are going to be the force. Highlight my force values or select them. And notice we get a nice straight line. That's a good sign. So we can, uh, we can deal with the title. We can deal with all of that later. But I'm just going to add a trend line. It's a nice straight line. And let's go to, if you want a linear trend line, get this out of the way. For my trend line, I'm going to hit Format Trend Line. I would display the equation on chart. Now notice it says 7e to the minus 11. Well, that's not enough sig fix. My slope is big G, and it should be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 to one sig fig. That is 7e to the minus e minus 11. We need more, so I'm going to right click the trend line label, hit format trend line label, uh, and it says number. I'm going to change the category to scientific. And we can do two or three decimal places. Um, if I do two decimal places, I get my value. 6.67 times uh, 10 to the minus 11 as my slope. Now, when I actually submit this graph, I'm going to have to clean this up, add axes, titles, add units, and stuff. But this is the basics of how you change the format to get a nice slope. Uh, the only other thing we need here well, one of the other things we need here, I'm actually going to add axis titles. My y value is force of gravity. My x value is um, m m over r squared. And you want to add units there. I'm, I'm going to add units later, but that's just this is just so I can 
keep track of what I'm looking at. Uh, but we need error bars here. Now, we can easily get the error bars for force because we already have the uncertainty for force. So if I want to add error bars, I, well, I go to add error bars. Since my force error, since my force of gravity is vertical, if I click the vertical error bars, right click and hit select data, actually, whoops, right click and hit format error bars, I want to change them to a custom error, specify the value. Notice all my force values are different, so I'm going to select all of these DF values for my positive and for my negative. Select them, hit OK, and they are tiny, tiny, tiny error bars. You can't even really see them. Well, we also need to get the error bars for the horizontal uh, variable nm over r squared, and this is where we have to do some uncertainty calculations, some processing. So we know the rule for uncertainties in a product or quotient is add the relative uncertainties of all the variables to get the product or quotient's relative uncertainty. So the relative uncertainty is just the uncertainty over the actual measurement. So what I can do if I want to find the um, find the uncertainty of this of this result is I can well I'm going to add a column for relative uncertainty of m m over r squared. Uh, and so to get the relative uncertainty of this variable here, I add up the relative uncertainties of all the other variables. So my four variables in my product are m1, m2, and then r and r again. r is there twice because it's r squared, so it's the same as divided by r times r. So I'm going to do equals uncertainty in mass 1 divided by mass 1 plus uncertainty in mass 2 divided by mass 2 plus uncertainty in distance divided by distance plus uncertainty in distance again divided by distance again. Now our formula here is just saying that the relative uncertainty in mass plus the relative uncertainty in mass 2 plus the relative uncertainty in distance plus the relative uncertainty in distance again will give us the relative uncertainty in our product or quotient of all those things. And we get a value, 0 0.03. Uh, since I have a formula there, I can drag and drop it to get the relative uncertainties for all of my um, all my products or quotients. And let's let's just think about what this means. This value right here, zero point zero three two. That means that my uncertainty is about three percent, three point two seven percent. This tells me my uncertainty is about three point three percent. I have a larger uncertainty down here. It's about six point three percent. Um, so those are my relative uncertainties. To get the absolute uncertainty, which I'm going to just write as uncertainty in m, m over r squared. You would write it as delta of that thing, but delta is kind of hard to do in Excel. Uh, I just multiply the relative uncertainty by the value. So equals relative uncertainty times the value. Press enter. I get my absolute uncertainty. And now I can drag and drop down to get my uncertainty values. Now I can change the uncertainty values for my horizontal var variable. Right click, format error bars. I'm going to do a custom uncertainty, specify the values, and it's going to be these values for the positive values and these values for the negative values. Press OK. And look what we have here. We have error bars, and they are not zero. They are significant relative to our measurements. We see that they get bigger as mm over r squared gets bigger. So that would actually tell us in the future that our slope value, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, could have a range of values because our best fit line 
really could fit between, uh, as long as it falls within the error bars, then it, then it, then it still fits our best fit line. So later on, we'll talk about how to find the uncertainty in a slope, and we're going to be using these error bars to do that. Um, so this is pretty much everything you need for your graph. After you have all of that done, you of course need to clean it up, make it presentable, add titles, add units, and everything, and then uh, create your table, write up your lab report, and then you'll be done. Hope that was helpful. Bye.